ha, 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 ha. It's another episode. Oh! It's another episode. To those of you who have subscribed, who have been sharing, and definitely you have also been, you know, talking about the show, I appreciate you. The love is amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, you're wondering, what show am I talking about? In your vicinity with me, Jedi. My name is Oluwatosi Jedi Ayo. And uh, the story continues. Uh, remember I told you some time back that we had a trip to Dallas, Texas? Uh, <laughs> we didn't just leave. We took the best out of it. Because on this particular show, this particular episode, you're going to be finding out another amazing dimension to life with my guest. I went to visit him. We were so welcomed and he took care of us. But most importantly, we had a very good interactive moment. You want to know who I'm talking about? Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Watch and I'll be right back. Yeah, we're here in the show. We're, we're about to do the show now. Yeah, welcome to the show, yeah. yeah. Need I say much more? No, that's it. The show has kicked off, the show has started, and the guest has been unveiled. It's your own favorite online TV show, in your vicinity with Jenny. My name remains Olua Tosin, Jenny Ayo, one of your favorite hosts, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, and you know, normally I'll do my introductions, but He's broken the jinx, he's broken the ice, like he went on in his own way and that is how real we are. How else will I say it again? It's an honor for me. This is someone that personally I just respect. You know, I'm honored to be a brother, a friend, and I've watched his craft for so long and how he has metamorphosed from just being a comedian to a TV show host to, apart from being an outstanding master compare, to being like a life coach, training people, you know, being a mentor to so many people. He's an author as well. He's just an all embodied entity by the hand of God. It's my pleasure to bring on to the show my own brother, who is known as Oye Laki Ola Teju, the Prince of Obomosho. <laughs> I call him the King of Talk. You all know him as one of the foremost pioneers of comedy in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, Teju Baby Face is on my show today. <laughs> Thank TJ! You. Thank you. I'm, I'm very concerned that uh, you've had only one shot of your COVID vaccine. Uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you are not able to transmit at this point because some of us are fully vaccinated. And uh, that's what you need to understand. Yeah, but, but the half vaccination I have has covered me now. Okay, it's better know? than someone laughing behind the camera who hasn't even been vaccinated at okay. all. Did you, but you didn't notice when I said vaccinated? I didn't say vaccinated. You need to. You look. You must give me a prosper by America. And I'm working on it. Ah. It's vaccinated. You know. <laughs> <laughs> because these kids in the house are making me feel all of a sudden. Because these kids. No, daddy. Yes, daddy. I'm like, no, no. You, you guys can't leave me behind. Oh, yeah. I didn't add that to the introduction. Yeah. He's a father. Father of two nations. Oh, yes. Two nations, twins, oh, yeah. a boy and a beautiful girl, like a handsome boy and a beautiful girl. Amazing. So let me start from how has it been for you? After you've metamorphosed, you've progressed in life, in your career, in your ministry, in your calling, how is it for you now being a father? Because it's a different body entirely. It's the most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. The most difficult thing, especially doing it from the United States of America. It's, um, it's uh, in fact, let me, give, let me put it this way. I remember that when we wanted to have the, the kids, we eventually had them in the United States. <laughs> but I was, I, I was convinced that we should have them in Nigeria. So, because um, we're not going to have them here. And what I thought was, look, if they're going to go to America and have a better life, then I was going to, I mean, I'm making money and I'm going to make a lot of money. So whenever the time comes and, you know, we need to move when they are old, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to get them a passport. Is it not just $500,000, you know? <laughs> when the big boys talk, yeah. they talk. You know, like, that God will do it. It's not $500,000. Simple. You know? so, so I wasn't going to come. And my excuse was, I mean, I'm Teddy baby face. If I give birth to twins in Nigeria, I mean, do you know the kind of royal treatment? Yes, that, as a prince of Ogomo. Yes, that I'm going to get. As a, as a matter of fact, that whole hospital, no matter how big it is, everybody will know that, that Teju. Yeah, Teju baby face 
his wife just delivered twins. It will be a celebration all around oh, Lagos. Yeah. I mean, it will so, be a viral yeah, kind said, of... Yeah, it be viral. So why are you telling me to leave and go to America where nobody will know me? No, I'm not. So we argued back and forth and eventually... Uh, you she know, won. What, no, she, well, she won by calling wiser heads to prevail, you know, on me, which I'm glad that they did because that would have been a very... Um, <laughs> A, a buffoon move. Oh, oh yes, that fe- that been a very very silly move to have deprived those kids of that. So I I say that to let you know that I I had foreseen, or I suspected the kind of challenges that they could be in trying to raise uh, two children by yourself in mm-hmm. America. And so we had them in America. We came back to Nigeria. We stayed for a while, and then we decided, look, uh, perhaps they could have a better run. Uh, at uh, starting life in America for a couple of years. So let's just come do this for a couple of years. Let's see how it goes. So we came and um, if not that my wife has hid my passport. There are many times that um, the light has returned. Let me let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is, I believe you have a gift of making the best that comes your way. It might be as a result of the home you come from, the upbringing, the training you've had, or it might just be something that is naturally a gift from God. Because even while you are here, your name is still relevant. You've recreated online materials that inspire, educate a lot of people. Even while you were in Nigeria, you were, I mean, when you released your book and when you're doing your TV shows, you've, you've always made the best of for me, if you are even in Afghanistan now, you will make the best out of it. <laughs> so I don't think it, I, it could have been a divine arrangement. Yes, those moments are there where you feel, oh, ah, oh, e, yeah, if, mm, yeah. Do you, ah. know, do you know how many? Do you know how many domestic staff I had in my house in Lagos at any point in time? I mean, I, I was, I was like, I was like, I was like, royal artists are come when they are, they are, you know, bathed the babies or when they are bathed for the babies, when they are taking their bath, you know, and come and, and powder them and perfume them, then I'd come carry them, yes. play around with them for a while. But as soon as somebody saw their diapers, I'm handing them, ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's a different ball game. Oh yeah, it's an entire different ball game. And then, you know how it is, there was the cook, there was, there was the driver, there were the PAs, I mean. Hardly lifting a finger, doing anything. So you come to the United States, which is the ultimate do-it-for-yourself economy, and then you're raising twins. Who at that time, when we came, they were they just they were just a year, and so the the people who raise kids, they tell you of the terrible twos when the kids yeah. two. We we call oh, them, uh, oh, yeah. we call it the terrific twos. Oh. So I mean, so it was uh, it was difficult, but it's but I I I know I was I was given the wisdom to understand that those are some of the best moments of our oh. lives of my life, I was made to understand that I should not only, uh, not only should I not complain, I should appreciate and acknowledge those moments, that I should live in those moments. For every diaper that I changed, for every wet nose that I um, sucked out. Um, Yes, Uh, you're supposed to live in those moments because the days are coming when you'll find that those moments passed uh, by you so fast and you weren't able to live in those moments, those are some of the best memories of your life. Oh yeah. So you're making you you know you're making me realize that actually they are. My daughter is about four years old, and I remember then I mean getting exposed to learning how to change diaper, how to bathe the baby, how to be careful, feed the baby, give the baby attention. And I see my daughter now. Sometimes it's like I am the one craving for the attention. Oh, yeah. And she's just four. I mean consider that. Consider that, so I am going to be this uh, global superstar. Having been this African star, I'm going to be now this global superstar. Uh, and then you're not going to have time to do those things again. But not only are you not going to have the time, the opportunity is going to be gone because they're not going to be kids anymore. But more importantly, is that people are not going to be able to reconcile just how close-knit and how loving your family is. They're yes. not going to be able to reconcile that with, the, with your status as a global superstar, they're not going to understand that how, how is it that you're this person and you were able to do all of that. And then you're going to try to explain to them that, well, I'd like to take credit, but actually it's not me. The circumstances of life, the vagaries of life yes. and the vacillations of life made it so that when the kids were growing, <laughs> we had just moved to America, so I had to do those things. The global superstardom came shortly after that. <laughs> you understand? What, what did I love about the way you speak? is you don't, I'm trying to look for the perfect way to say it, 
You don't speak like you are praying to. I mean, there are some things you will speak like in form of prayer. You speak like you've activated the faith in existence. That is why you will say, after being an African star, yeah. now as a global star, not, oh, I'm praying to be, or um, I'm on my way to, mm -mm. it's not showing physically the way people embrace it. But you have seen it that you are a global oh, star. Oh, y'all just wait for this, you know, just, just give it some time, you know. This is, what, this is what I have to be doing in this moment. This moment is I have to raise these kids, right? And, and I realize that I, I need to invest those years to raise these kids, you know. What, what are you going to invest? What, three, four, five? Six? So it doesn't take really anything. Yeah, what, and it might even add to the... Yeah, I mean, what are you going to invest? A couple of years to raise them. Uh, so I, I am also blessed because when you have the body of work, when you've done the body of work uh, already, because well, I had the privilege of starting out pretty early in my career, so I've, I've done this body of work over so many years that uh, can the, the legacy in a man of speaking stands. So I'm able to take the time off to raise these kids for a couple of years. And then once that is done, then we, we're going to do the global thing. And uh, you need to have sorted out the family before you sort out the career. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be a problem for you. Hope you heard that. You need to sort out family before you sort out the career. A lot of people have misplaced it. Oh, that's going to come back and bite you if you don't do that. Is that the reason behind maybe separation or family issues? Well, there are several reasons, but you, you must, it's, uh, it's God, God first, family second, career third. Uh, you, you need to sort out those things. It, it can't be God first, career, then family, or family, God, and then it's God, family, career. When you sort out that, uh, then you're good. So you need to, for example, there are certain things that I could be doing right now that I don't do because I know it's going to take me away from my family. You know, now, you, you need to be careful. On the other hand, you also don't want to raise your children with the, because I see a lot of people do funny things. They do things like, I wasn't able to come to this event and I wasn't able to do what I was supposed to do because of my family, because my kids had an exhibition in school and I never miss any things that my kids do. I never miss anything that, that's, that's not exactly being responsible, okay? Mm. Sometimes you gotta miss what your kids are doing because you, ha you have to go and make money. Yes. A according to a guy called Rabbi Daniel Lapin, you don't want to set the example for your kids that it is all right to be shoddy with your work and be responsible with your work because you are attending to family things. So that's not what we're saying. <laughs> but you need to find a balance. You cannot be the kid, uh, the father who never goes to anything that the kids, you, you must find a balance. Uh, but the most important years are these years. Take for example the fact that we're raising these kids in America and I want them to speak the Yoruba language. Yeah. And I realize all of a sudden that in the next two years is very critical. Uh, in that, uh, for that to happen. If they are ever going to speak that Yoruba language, the next 12 months, actually, are very critical. The next 12 months, I need to be around them. If they miss, if I miss the next 12 months, they're never going to pick that language. Wow. Yeah, because, I mean, you heard them when you came in. Yeah. They're already picking the English, because it's, it's the language of the land, so they're picking it from everywhere. So if I were away on a tour, if I were away on an extended tour right now, I'm just going to miss that window. So it means this has to happen before some basic strategies or basic moves will be done. Oh yes, you need to sort out your family. Look, it doesn't take a long time. Because the next thing you know now, he's going to be a boy who's going to be saying, please knock before you enter my room. She's going to be a girl who's going to say, oh dad, you are, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. That's what they're going to be saying. They're going to be teenagers very soon. And they grow faster these days. So you have just a few years to do all this. Look. Every time I carry my son or my daughter and I hug them, I live in those moments. I, I kid you not. I like to hold them. I like to live. So when I carry them and I hug them, I, I, I file it away mentally. I file it away mentally. I live in those moments because I know that son is going to come striding into this room and is going to be six feet two. She's going to come striding. She's going to be maybe five eleven. <laughs> and that's, that's the end of all the hugging. You know, I actually thought I came to interview. I didn't know I was going to be taking notes in my thought, in my head, <laughs> learning a lot from this man. You know, you're one of the few that I have known in the industry that in as much as we had an environment where there were some basic things you had to do to have a profile or to be known or to build something for yourself, 
which is, oh, you have to be at shows, they have to see you perform, you have to do your own shows. Some now made it an annual event. Some, But Teju's move was so strategic. I remember when he did Comedy Last Born. <laughs> yeah. At Ajip Hall Center. Yeah, 2003. 2003. And I think it was 2005 or 6. 6. You did um, uh, Se second, second the second show. Yeah. It's the second term. Yeah, yeah. life is second, second term. Second term at the Muson Center Show Hall. And what I saw there was, you didn't just want to do how the regular is being done. You were still gonna do something, but you had a strategy on how to do it. How did you come about that? Because that's the level of wisdom that I believe most people don't have. And there are a lot of people who look up to you, who personally you've not shared this before, like the secrets around it. Yeah. Because as at that time, I'm sure, you didn't have the books that you have written or the books you've read or a lot that you have done, yeah. the shows you had that took you to another level. Yeah. You were just the normal, basic first generation comedian. Yeah in Nigeria. So how, because a lot of people, we, I was almost lost in that area to make sure, okay, every year, annually, I do I show annually, <laughs> but it didn't really have to be like that. Well, uh, first of all, life is tough. Let's just get that off the table, okay? Life is tough, life is very tough. Life is doubly tough if you're coming at it from where we are coming from. If you're coming at life from Nigeria or from Africa, life is very tough. Okay, and it is that in those environments, you, you must figure it out pretty quickly what you are not. Figuring out what you are is going to take a couple of years, many, many years. As a matter of fact, I am very, I'm very much caught up in the story of, if you had to ask me right now that who inspires me, if that's the question you had to ask me, after uh, the life of Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. who inspires me. Your personal Lord and Savior. My personal Lord and Savior. Mine too. And, you know, and a couple of other people who, you know, you've probably known with me. The person whose story I'm very interested in right now is Giorgio Armani. Giorgio Armani. Giorgio Armani did not become the Giorgio Armani that you know. This Giorgio Armani that all of you know, Giorgio Armani, Armani, everybody's wearing Armani on the red carpet, Armani. That talks about The perfume, Giorgio Armani. That Giorgio Armani did not become Giorgio Armani until he was about 42 or 43. He didn't start early. Wow. He became, this Giorgio Armani that you know became Giorgio Armani in his 40s. It was not until he turned 40 and then 41, 42, 43, 44 that he became Giorgio Armani. And so when he was interviewed, when he turned 80, but by the way, at, at, at his 80th birthday, he looked like he was in his early 60s, you know. So, uh, Giorgio Armani is about 85 now. You know, it's about 84, going on 85 or there about now. So, he's still looking very sharp and yeah. he's still in his element. Giorgio Armani said to GQ magazine that life really begins in your 40s, that it takes time to figure out your way of thinking. You experiment, you do many things. So it takes time to figure it out. So I say that to say that, look, you might not know what your life is about, but you should figure out pretty quickly what your life is not about. So it will help you move faster. Yes, you might, not pursuing... know, yes, you might not know what your life is about, but you should figure out what your life is not about. Okay? That too takes time, but you should know the things that you're not supposed to do. For example, I was in a movie called Diamond Drink. Yes. Yeah, so and as soon as I did that movie, everybody thought that, man, I was going to be the next thing. And I thought I was going to be the next thing too. And everybody said I should be the next thing. But after pursuing that for just a while, it quickly occurred to me that, no, that was not the way. Hmm. It quickly occurred to me. And despite the fact that many people still thought that was the way, I knew that was not the way. So let's think about it for a minute. Let's say I pursued acting, and that was all that I wanted to do. You guys will never have known Teddy Babyface as a comedian. There never have been a Teddy Babyface show. <laughs> there never have been any of those. There would have rather been a Teddy Babyface the actor. An actor. And uh, given the life cycle and the career cycle of Nigerian actors, <laughs> with all due respect, uh, I might not be anywhere at this time. The shelf life of the Nigerian actor is pretty, you know, on the whole, very short, very few exceptions. Now, I might have been the exception to the rule, one of the exceptions, but I, it wasn't a chance I was willing to take, especially since I knew in my Noah that a path did not lie there. There was no path there. So I knew that was not what I was. So to bring it to comedy, I saw how the industry was. And I knew for a matter of fact that doing this yearly shows is not what I was supposed to do. So in figuring out, I, I put it to you most boldly and with all humility that everything you know about me 
has just been setting the stage for that which I'm supposed to do. Like Giorgio Armani, I will say to you shortly that life does begin in the 40s, that everything that I've done is just experimenting. So the compliment that you paid me in the beginning about how I'm able to thrive is just me looking for the highest expression of my talent and my abilities. I am always fascinated by people who are peerless, people who, who deploy their talent and their giftings without peering, who, who are just inimitable. That's what I'm looking for. They are inimitable. You can't copy them. Inimitable. You know. Yes. Ah, That's write it down. They are watching. Inimitable. Yes, inimitable. You cannot imitate them. They are just peerless. The Yorubas call it to damn forget it, to be on your own. They, ah, they, don't they, forget the way. yes, they down for, they are just on their own, they are peerless. You cannot touch them when they, when they perform and they ex express themselves at the highest level. You know that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're doing what they're born to do, which is why I'm one of the greatest fans of Lewis Hamilton, the F1 racer. I mean, the guy is peerless. <laughs> you put him in that Mercedes car, you, you know, he's going to bang it, he's peerless. That's why I'm a big, huge fan of Rafael Nadal on clay. He's going for the 14th Roland Garros. The guy's peerless. You know, those kind of people, they, they hold a lot of attraction for me. And... I'm sorry, the way he's calling me is as if I don't know people. How vast... Ah, man. You are deep. Well, well... Hear the names you're calling, which means you've taken your time to personally study these people and have their life story be the inspiration to you. Oh, yeah, this guy. Now, why am I saying this? One of my guests in one of my episodes said, that's uh, Apostle James O'Conn, he said, education validates you. Now, he is not saying you must go to school and earn your BSc. If you do, fine. But in that field of purpose that you find yourself, Educate yourself. You want to be a cinematographer? Educate yourself in I just want to raise the sound. Our time is up, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's the only way my, my director gives me a signal to be like, okay, can we go on a break, please? Is that Give a break or a few minutes? Oh, a that's break. A, you, look, this is how you, you can talk. We can't hear you. What do you say? <laughs> What's that? We're actually supposed to go on a break. Uh, so <laughs> your head director. Your head director. Okay, so we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Yes, we are back. Welcome back. It's still in your vicinity with Jenny. And I'm honored to be in the vicinity of my guest today who opened the doors of his home to welcome us and have a good interactive moment with him. His beautiful wife and lovely children received us well. And it's amazing the wealth of knowledge in this same man that I thought I knew. I'm knowing a new man entirely. So. This is meant to be an interactive interview, but it has become a lecture interview. Like, I am the one learning now. He's dropped a wealth of knowledge, like, when he was talking about the plan on, like, you know, where you're going to achieve in life. Since you know it's going to take time, it's going to be experimental, based on how Judge Amani spoke about it. Again, which means it's easy for you to quickly identify the things that are not for you and you can run with the cause to pursue the things out for you. Thank you, TJ, once again, for being a part of the show. And you were saying earlier on, when you were mentioning different names, you mentioned uh, Lewis Hamilton, Formula One, you mentioned Juju Amani. Are these the only people who really inspire you? Or are there people back home in Nigeria as well who inspire you? Oh yeah, I mean, I had, I mean, I had my, I had and I still have my mentors. I, I mean, it's Licky Older, so, Samadi, I mean, there was, um... As he's calling the name, it's our tradition here. As he calls the name, we speak it for that we're going to, I'm going to be interviewing you, <laughs> Lake Alder, I'm going to be interviewing you, Pastor Samadi, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I, when I was starting out in my career, uh, Alibaba, Basoj, Tarea, The boss himself, yes. You know, uh, Feladruto, he had a huge part in that. Um, T was of... I mean, T.A. was, T.A., many people don't know that T.A. is why I wanted to become a comedian. <laughs> you know, yeah, T.A. was 
tea was exactly why I wanted to become a comedian in the first place when I was in the university. Uh, another person who inspired me greatly was, well, tea was the reason why I wanted to become a comedian, but the reason why I wanted to become an entertainer at all was RMD, Richard oh. Mufedamijo. Yeah. RMD. Bros, we're coming to interview you. Yeah. TA, we're coming to interview you. Besod, sir, you're coming to, we're coming to interview you. Ali, the boss, we're coming to interview you. Yeah, so, I mean, those are the people. RMD has, RMD has a quality about him that makes me always, uh, <laughs> he, he used to manifest in a funny way. No matter how well put together I thought I was, no matter how well dressed I thought I was, every time I got into RMD's presence, I always felt underdressed. <laughs> <laughs> I was, enough, that's how I feel around you now. Oh, really? <laughs> I was finally hard, and he still has that thing. Of course, as I've grown, you know, I've now learned to, you know, so when I buy show up, of course, that helped when I started to step up and he would say, man, you're looking nice. Who made that? Who made that? How can I get that? So that helped. But he has that magical thing. Around, and that was why I wanted to become an entertainer in the first place. He had that thing going. So we all need heroes without, without having people to whom we look up, you know, and this is why when I told you that I was going to be global, I'm not saying it because it's a wish. It's just that the people who inspire me now are, are global on that level. And, and you need to pay attention to that. The people who inspire you, if you find yourself, <laughs> and you should be worried depending on where you are. If you're a very young person who is inspired by people in your locality, uh, especially if you're Nigerian at this time or African, and the people who inspire you are just what we would call local champions in the sense that their influence does not go beyond the borders of your country. If you're a young person, that's good. But if you're getting on in life, in age, and the people who inspire you are within the borders of your locality, there might be a problem. <sighs> yes, because we're living in a global setting all of a sudden. Yes, you know, yes, so there yes. Might be, there might not be a problem, okay? But there might also be a problem. So I am blessed to be inspired now by people who touch the globe. So every time that I see the guys who inspire me, the question that I'm constantly asking myself is that, of my plethora of gifts. Mm, but hold on, hold on. Plethora, <laughs> not it down. Okay. Of my, say it again. Say of my plethora. Of my plethora. <laughs> of, of abilities and giftings. Which of these things can go global? Of the many things mm. that I can do. Mm. Which of these things can which of these things has the potential to serve the world? I can do several things quite well. I am gifted. I'm a multi-potentialite. But of all the several things that I can do that God has gifted me with, which of these things has a global appeal? It's a question that you must ask. It is those questions that the Yoruba people have a saying. They say, Ajelo Somon Vyoku. Yeah. Uh, one of the artists used it in a song. Oh, all of them use it. All of them. Was it, was it mayor? No. Was it... Um, well, well, it occurs to me now that when you're talking about that, you're probably talking about this younger artist. I mean, I'm thinking the old school ones. Oh! Uh, <laughs> yes, that's another thing about Teju. Yeah. Teju is sound an old school Nigerian artist. Yeah. Like fathers of music in Nigeria. From Ebenezer Obe to Victor Laya to... Uh, King Sonia King Day. Sonia Day. Yeah. Like... Word for word, literal sing yeah, along. It's what we do, is what we do. Ah, TJ, you will drop some before we go, but keep saying yeah, it. So, Ajilo Somon Ubioko, which means that it is, it is commerce, commerce, trade, business, the quest for a better life, success is the quest for success that has flung me far away from home like a stone from a sling or from yeah. a catapult. Yeah. It is the quest for success that has flung me so far away from home like a stone that was flung, like a projectile that was flung mm -hmm. far away. Uh, and it is that that brings us to places like the United States of America. So on the one hand, you also want your kids to have a better life. But on the other hand is your own yearning as well, which is about the same yearning that Abraham had it. He just didn't know that he had it. So when God said to him, leave your land uh, and go to a land that I will show you, yeah. it found witness in him. Abraham must have been feeling like, man, this cannot be it. I'm not supposed to be this local champion in this place. And so he went out and, you know, he had all these descendants that covered the earth. So it's in that sense that, to come back to the point, uh, the people who inspire me now are global figures. Uh, fortunately, some of them are still Nigerians. They are Nigerian global figures as well. And so those are the guys to whom I look up. The guys who start, who, who bestride the whole globe and not just a, a corner of the globe. 
destroyed. Are you noting this? It's <laughs> a learning interview. <laughs> I want to say thank you for something that you may not know happened and you did for me. There was a time I was confused in my life based on the streams of talents that I have in my life and how I can function in them. Your statement a few minutes ago was actually what brought it in a higher grade understanding. We were at Time Out Lounge in Ikeja, by the pool, under a canopy. And you sat there and you spoke with me when I was complaining or like so driven about the elements that I had in my life as a musical artist, as a good host, and as a stand-up comedian, as a speaker, and I'm sure you may not remember, but if you do, fine. And I was a bit confused that, look, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do. And then you were like, look, you made reference to Sam and AME, and you said something that the only thing you have to know is you have to be patient enough to be successful in one before you move to the other. And in the process of already being successful in one, it has a ripple effect in boosting the other one, which means he was known as an actor, but he progressed from there to be a stand-up comic and built a lot from there. Now, what he built from there that made him successful with his shows, and also out there when you have events and performances at you know regular concerts, then its ripple effect grew to bring forth the Teju Maybe Face Show. We became the number one talk show in Nigeria and beyond. And then like that, it progressed from him being to being an author. And so at every level, Diamond Ring was a successful movie. Oh yeah. It was a suck. Oh, yeah, In fact, yeah. that was what people made, I mean, really got to know who Teddy Diamond was. Ring, Diamond, Ring, um, Diamond Ring helped me fulfill my first uh, career goal, which, that... was, which was to date many girls. <laughs> that was... How was that, dude? Oh, oh, I, 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. I, 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 Hallelujah. Look, I'm sorry, I know we're very real here, but there are some things I can't say. You know we had a conversation when we were at Bumi Devi's house? Oh, really? We did? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Bumi Devi, the CEO of Afrotainment, you know, Productions in Nigeria. He's actually one of the key people that played a major role in the life of comedians and events in Nigeria. Big shout out to you. You know, and... <laughs> yeah, I was, I mean, I was about, because I went to the University of Lagos and when you're in Unilag, you're, you're, I mean, it's about the parties and the girls. Yeah! And so I was there, and so I had to find the key to unlock the girls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I had to find the key. You know, you had to have, I mean, is, is that, that's, the thing, that's the thing about me that is, that is the thing. I, I, look, with all humility, I believe that I'm called to be a champion. I, I cannot express it. It usually comes across as being arrogant sometimes. And I, I know that I've been arrogant in my life. I don't think I've ever said it um, publicly before, but, but as I grow, I see where God needs to forgive me some of the arrogance that, that I have had, not only in the way that I behave, but it was also in the way of my thinking. And that is often the cross of people who know they are called to be champions. Because yeah. God gifts you with that ability in it. Yes. You, you're impatient with other people's shortcomings, your, you know, your, you know, True. You know, so True. I, I've had to learn. I've experienced it, don't worry. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> there's a mm, No, no. It, 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 it tells you now that it's a brother to me, even me, I can't I was, I was so... And I wasn't doing it purposely. I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't know. I, I was just I was just moving on as a train, which is one thing that I'd like to leave with you. I don't know how many minutes we have left. How many minutes we have left, Director? Okay, so... Um, uh, how long should... Is it an hour or half an hour? Half an hour, actually. Half an hour. You know what we've been speaking for? Where are you going to put all of this? <laughs> <laughs> you're going That's to, how real we are. You're going, sure. to, you're going to do two episodes? Maybe. Okay, so. Or extended version of the episode. Okay, because I want you to get all of this. Let me just drop this. Maybe it's the last thing that I will say. And then maybe you want to sign out. I don't know. Um, look, 
I said it before, life is tough. <laughs> and it's not me who said it. it it's in the Bible. Job, uh, the man Job, when he was going through his travel, said, or one of his friends, I forget who said it, but it's in the book of Job that as sparks fly upwards, <laughs> you know, the sparks of a flame, <laughs> as it flies upward, because the, fly, uh, the sparks from a flame never go down. I mean, no, they, I mean, so if I take two pieces of metal and do like this, yeah. the sparks are going to go. Yeah. You know, as sparks fly upward, surely, that is how man is born unto trouble. <laughs> you are, you are, look, let's clay it, okay? Let's clay it. I used to be like you. I just wanted a small school life. You are not going to get it. It's not, it's not a curse. <laughs> man is born unto trouble. You're going to see trouble. Now, here's your prayer. <laughs> your prayer is that you want God to help you stagger that trouble in the moment when you can handle it. You want to handle it Perhaps when you are young, the Bible says that it is good for a, long, a young man to wait on the Lord and be afflicted in his youth. Let him wait. Let him put his mouth in the dust when he's in his youth. You want to deal with this stuff early in life. That your career, for example, is going to have a dip. Is sure. Ah, I don't know how I can tell you this. That your high-flying career that is going to have a dip at some point is guaranteed. <laughs> you see, all that thing that you're doing, trying to make sure... That you're on top. Let me authenticate this thing. <laughs> there was a wedding we went for at Victory Christian Church in Satellite He hosted the wedding. I was there. And while I was walking with him to his car after the wedding, he said, Ah, where are you now? I said, I'm in Lagos State University. Eh, hey, okay. Um, are you finishing now? I said, Yes. I'm about to finish. Yeah, no, don't worry. You can't finish. You have extra year. <laughs> I did. <laughs> For us in the entertainment industry, it's normal. You just have to. So I authenticate. Oh. I've had great experiences with this guy. Man, that was. Where was that Victory Christian Center place? Somewhere, uh, no, Ablosh, you. Ojo Road. That was that. Osuji's wedding. I've been trying to remember that wedding. Wow. I, you know, that wedding keeps coming back to me in flashes. You were still driving the 504 Pijo. Ah, man. That was way before he had the Honda Hall. Man, we've been doing this for a minute. <laughs> we've been, been doing this for a minute. Look, so you're going to have a dip in career at some point. The severity, the severity of the dip is what differs, but you're going to have to slow down at some point. It's life. At least if you're called to destiny, let, let me clear that. Let, let, me, let me just qualify that. If you're called to a destiny of exploit, if you're really going to be great, you're going to have a career dip at some point. Okay? Just get ready for it and just pray for the grace of God through it. Unless a kernel of wheat, wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains as it is. But if it dies, then it brings forth much more. So prepare for the career dip at some point. Okay? But you must know that, you know, light follows darkness and that the joy cometh in the morning. Okay? What you must not do is this. Okay, and I used to be stop judging people. Okay, the the symptoms of somebody who is reinventing and somebody whose whose career is dead or is dying, the symptoms are the same. I will say that again. The symptoms of somebody whose career is reinventing and somebody whose career is dying, they're the same. The symptoms are the same. You're not going to hear. They are going to seem to be losing relevance in your eyes and in the eyes of the world. But one of them is going to reemerge stronger. The other one is going to go into obscurity. The only difference is your ability to accept the deep that is coming. Some people will fight that deep with everything they have. Once they see that they are beginning to lose some sort of steam or relevance, usually their heart telling them, or their mind, or their spirit rather, telling them, look, let's take a breather. Ah, take a breather. If they don't hear from me on Instagram every day, they're going to forget me. Mm. If they don't hear about me on social media for a week, they're going to forget me. No, 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 you know, we're, we're going to go and pose with a car. We're going to buy a car and we're going to pose with it. We're going to pose in front of our grand piano in our house. We're going to pose with our new clothes. They, whatever it takes, I must be relevant. You see, that mindset is going to get you into trouble sooner rather than later. The mindset you need to have is that of all the things that I can do very well, how am I best able to serve humanity and my constituency the best? And you see, once you keep asking that question, you will know once you're coming to the end of a particular cycle. You will know, for example, that as a musician, I think that I've spent my ability on this level. I cannot keep serving people 
on this level. There are guys who are coming out who are bigger, who are better, or more importantly, who are fresher. Take comedy, for example. There's a limit to how... You can do comedy for 20 years, but the guys who are coming up, the new guys who are coming, they're going to be fresher than you. They're yes. going to use your old jokes and give it new twists. Yes. And if they're not, they're going to be able to manage technology better than you. It's like you now, with all due respect to people who are doing skits, it's like you now asking me to start doing skits so I can compete with these young boys who are doing no. skits. No! No! I've, I've had that discussion before. And I, I respect them. I, I, I mean, them. I give it to them for creating Look, if you humor think, in that version. Look, if you think that's what you must do, hey, be you, man. I'm not judging you. But I'm saying that, look, for some of you who have been doing this long time, <laughs> it's not always prudent for you to try to remain relevant forever in the same space. So you keep adapting. Yes, you must give the industry what it needs. But as Steve Jobs will tell you, the market doesn't always know what it needs. Did we know we needed an iPhone before they did iPhone? Did we ever know we needed an iPad? Did we ever believe that we could have cameras? Who, who was it that asked for camera? Did you ask for a camera on your phone? Were you not content to have a camera that you could carry on the phone? But somebody said you needed a camera in your phone. You didn't ask, and they gave it to you, and all of a sudden you go, man, I can't live without this. Did you ever ask, now that you're driving this car, did you ever ask for a car that had heads-up display? Heads-up display is that thing you have on the, yes. on the windscreen yes. of your car. Yes. But now that you have it, you can't live without it. Did you ever ask for a 360 degree camera? The one yeah, that allows you to have the bird's eye view. You never asked for it. But they decided, Mercedes or somebody else decided that you needed it. Yes. They gave it to you. And now that you have an automobile that has that, you now decide that you cannot live without it anymore. Hey, did you ever ask for a flat screen television? Did you ever ask for the curved television? Who was it that said, hmm? What part of the market said, hmm? The next thing we need now is a curved TV. Who said that? Nobody did. The guy said, you know what, we feel you can do with that, so we're going to give it to you. Yes. So yes, you should give the market what it needs, but the higher level than that is that you should tell the market what it needs. And you're never going to be able to, to do that if you're a slave to the demands of people. And you become a slave to the demands of the market if you insist on remaining relevant at all costs. Speak to your spirit if you're going to be great. There are going to be moments, look, you know, you know the scripture, there's a time for everything, a time to smile, a time to cry, a time to build, a time to break down, a time to plant, a time to sow. And yet you never want to accept that there's a time to be popular and a time to be, well, maybe not as popular as you used to be. There's a time to make noise and there's a time to keep quiet. But no, in this loud world of, to loud world of today, they must always hear from you. As the Yoruba people will say, in Wu Ambeo, there is danger there, okay? Oh my gosh, I did not plan the interview this way, but I'm so glad that I can tell you watching, you've learned a lot, you've been inspired, you've been educated, and you have been blessed. I am proud to use the word blessed because even myself, that I came to interview this brother of mine, I have been blessed and I've learned on how I can even make things better in my life. This is a new phase in my life with my TV show, and it has just simply been as a growth from one successful point to the other. But TJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said you wanted me to sing for them. <laughs> is that what you just before the music, were there moments being a host at events, maybe weddings and all, the way we hustle, were there moments you wanted to slap? Maybe either the event coordinator or one of the people in the event, or just you, just someone just annoyed you. You were, you are the MC. They know you are the MC, and you just wanted to stop. So, well, um, the, the truth is that that didn't actually happen often uh, for me. For me, it um, it actually it happened every event, every single event, every every event, every single event, every. I got so tired of it that at some point I said I wasn't MCing again. I just said I said I was done with, I, and that was why and that was why I started to charge ridiculously high amounts of money, and then people still paid it. So every time I went out, I took solace and comfort from the fact that I was charging them ridiculously. So it didn't matter just how annoying you people are. But again, it's stature. The the more you grow as a brand, yeah, the more they come to respect you 
and you know you know they give you that difference then again it's also with all due respect to my people my people also have a mindset where we don't respect craft yes you know um i agree to that there's a difference Maybe. there's a difference to how they treat you in america when or in europe for example if you're working for say an american company they they, they, they treat you with a certain type of difference it's not because they are better people it's just that the system is libelous or rather the mm. system is uh what's the word i'm looking for uh, there's a word I'm looking for. It, it's a uh, system uh, is libelous. They can't sue you. Let's just put it that way. Uh, we live in a system where you can be sued if you're living. And in you the can West. sue as well. Yeah, you can sue as well. So if somebody disrespects you, you know, uh, you live in that kind of system. You know, litigious. That's the word I'm looking for. We live in a litigious system in the West, in America. It's a litigious system. We don't live in a litigious system in Africa. So you can talk to your event MC anyhow. If you talk to your event MC anyhow, in the United States, you can be sued. Yes. Yeah. And I will sue you. Nice. Try me. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, TJ. So the last thing he's going to do before we wrap up the show is going to sing one or two from the old school. Well, before you wrap up, I, I'm a singer and I'm going to get out of here. Right? <laughs> so you, you know, Okay. I mean, I mean. Meloni, well, first of all, my voice is terrible. <laughs> it's okay. So let's get that. I, it's terrible. But what I always like to sing is Fuji. But now I'm going to sing this one because all of a sudden, uh, I know that Tunde Kilani seems to have a new movie coming out called Angela, which oh, is, okay. um, you know, which is supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be the biopic of the late great uh, Akpala Phenom in Nigeria, Iloma Ura, who died unfortunately too early, you know, so that, for some reason, that's just been ringing in my head. You can see his social media handle on the screen. Please make sure you follow TJ. Yes. I call him TJ. Everybody calls him TJ, yeah. But I call him TJ. He is the king of talk. I call him the prince of Obomo shop. And I'm highly honored to be your brother and a friend. Please help me appreciate it. Thank you very much for tuning in. I remain yours, Oluwatosi Jedi Ayo. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of In Your Vicinity with Jedi. Have a good one. Yeah, director, wave at them. <laughs> wave, put your hand in front of the camera. Put your hand. Put front. your hand in front of me, yeah. <laughs> ah, the one and only Olateju Oyelaki, my brother, my friend. I call him the king of talk, the prince of Ogbobo Show. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is actually one of the forerunners, one of the main guys, one of the first generation comedians of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I really appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for those words. Ah, but boy, you deep, man. I'm sorry, I have to say it in my local way. But boy, you deep, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being an inspiration to so many who are watching. I'm sure they'll be seeing you from a different angle. And that was it. I had a good time with my brother, Ted, your baby face. To know the next guest is very simple. Please help me click on the notification button. Help me share it and subscribe. Or let's do it this way. Subscribe, click on the notification button and share, okay? And on the next episode, you would know who will be my next guest? Ha. Take care of yourself. I'll see you soon.